everyone, and welcome to SE Geek Bootcamp. I'm your host, the Software Engineering Geek, and today we're going to be talking about variables. So sit back and download a cup of knowledge because SE Geek begins now. So in this video, we're going to be talking about variables and building on what we talked about in the last video. I'm also going to be showing you just some uh, of one of the tools that I use uh, when programming in Groovy in particular. Um, to actually go through this video and actually you know be able to use this, you have to install Groovy first. I'll link that up in the show notes uh, for a video of how to install Groovy. So once you get that installed, come back to this video. And once you have that installed, what you can do is type in Groovy dash dash version just to see that Groovy is installed and the current version I'm using is 2.1.6. My JVM is installed, which Groovy works on top of the Java JVM. You don't have to worry too much about that. You just have to get those things installed so you can start using uh, the Groovy programming language, which is the language I chose for these tutorials. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to use a tool called Groovy Console. And this is pretty much where I'm going to live uh, for the remainder of uh, these tutorial videos. And if I can just get that up on screen. And this is just a nice little console that allows us to type in some commands run them and see their output uh, in this output window. So first thing I'm going to do is the typical uh, hello world program that everybody does. My voice is doing funny things there. Uh, and the first th command we're going to type is um, print ln, which is short for print line. And we're just going to give that what we call a well, string. And that is just, uh, you know, single or double quotes. And we're going to type, hello, world. And then I'm going to go up to this and run it. And as you can see, there's a uh, keyboard command, which I'm going to be running from now on. There's a couple other uh, settings I have uh, in here. Obviously, I bumped up the uh, size of the font. And uh, I took out show the script on output because we already have it in the top window. I think I also have auto clear on run just to make things a little better. And I'm just going to do control R and run that. And you see it prints out hello world. So this is the first thing most people do when they're learning a new language, which I find kind of boring. So let's actually start talking about variables. Now, when I was talking in the last video, I mentioned memory. And memory is like the short-term uh, storage. Uh, it's like the you know short-term, actually, memory for a computer. And uh, when you run a program, all of the code of that program, uh, compiled or interpreted, has to be in memory. And one of the things that a lot of variables, one of the things a lot of... Uh, programs use, I should say, is variables. Uh, it allows us more flexibility. So what I'm going to do here is make a just a generic variable, and I'm just going to call it um, message. And we're going to set that equal to hello world. So now we have a variable called message. I'm just going to take that and put it here. And if I run that again, well, you don't really see much because, you know, not a whole lot has changed. But as you can see, I run it again and it changes and updates. So when you define a variable um, in, you know, any programming language, this tells the, the uh, program to allocate certain memory for uh, storage. So the more variables you have, the more storage a, uh, a particular program takes in general. So right here uh, in Groovy in particular, Groovy is a, um, it's a dynamic uh, language 
which uh, allows it to do things like def, but you could be more static where I could actually say, you know, string here, which is very much like Java. If I press run again, it runs, no big deal. Uh, so uh, Groovy is actually optionally typed. Now there are pros and cons to being dynamic typed and optionally typed. Um, some of the pros to being dynamic typed is you can put anything, you know, pretty much into uh, a dynamic variable. Although once it's dis uh, once it's assigned, then you know it becomes a little bit more restrictive after that. Like the the programming language figures out what's in that variable, and this can be useful for other things that we're not really going to talk about so much in this. Um, one of the cons is. You know, you don't really know what it's in that variable, what that variable is. Whereas in a static type, if I go like this, you know that this variable contains a string. Now we could also uh, just as easily put int, which is for integer, and we could change this to the number 9 or something like that and run it, and it prints out that. One thing that's actually interesting in um, Groovy is because of how it actually treats uh, different variables and it's you know dynamicism, it'll actually allow this and print it out just fine. However, if I change this to an int and then go over here and try to put in some you know just some text and run it, we'll get an error. And you see we get an exception thrown. And this is way too big. Let's see if I can. And it's not making the, let's see. View, smaller font. What's the view, control shift S. So, and obviously you can see here that it's complaining that, you know, can't assign Java, you know, lang string into class int. So it's one thing to be aware of is, you know, once you can't, as usually you can't assign uh, different types into variables. So this gives us the ability to, uh, you know, do variables, which is, you know, very nice thing. Uh, something else that we can do, uh, particularly in Groovy, uh, particularly with strings, they have uh, two uh, two variants in their uh, strings, which this one is uh, just uh, you know plain string. But since I have the double quotes instead of the string single quotes, I can actually specify a variable inside this, and we'll call this um, you know we'll basically call this times, and we'll use a dollar sign to note it's actually a variable, and change this to how many times go over here and change this back to string and then we'll define a variable actually we'll just do def times and we'll say this equals eight and if we run that we see how many times eight so this actually does variable substitution for you. Now you can get a lot fancier than this, but this is one of the ways that you can actually, uh, you know, pull variables into strings. And it's actually uh, one of the, another way you can do this is by concatenation. And I have to make sure there's a space here. And oops make that times, run that again. And you can see that, you know, this is another way of, you know, concatenating strings. But the other way I did, it looked a little nicer and it's actually slightly more efficient. So that's one of the things that you can do with variables. Uh, variables, uh, I'm not gonna go too much into uh, scoping, but I'll, I'll just mention it right now. Variables usually have a scope uh, where, you know, wherever they're defined, they can be used. Um, you can also, in some languages, have uh, global variables or variables that sit at a particular level and uh, be used at lower levels. Um, but usually, they're you know wherever you have them uh, defined is where they can actually be used and accessed from. So it's just something to keep in mind, uh, you know, when programming. I'll go more in depth of that once I once I get to object-oriented programming at the end of. Uh, 
these tutorials. So that's pretty much all I had to talk about with variables per se. Um, I'll talk to you next time.